Hello again, so I'm going to continue the One Way Nova video. This is Dr. Vahid Aryadus from the National Institute of Education. In the first part of this uh, presentation, I showed you how to run an ANOVA test from this menu from One Way Nova. I'm going to continue. So uh, here I'm going to run the analysis on stream, uh, which I, as I explained, has three this is school stream has three levels a uh, normal technical normal academic and express and in the first video I analyzed grammar so I'm going to add in uh, comprehension scores as well for this presentation because in the first half uh, of this video I mentioned that I was going to analyze both of them alright so for options as you remember I, I chose descriptives homogeneity of variance test, Brown, Forsyth, and Welsh. Uh, but I didn't find time to discuss these two, but I will in this one, in, in this video. And, th and finally, I chose the mean means plot. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is that I'm going to ch uh, choose... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ch uh, choose post hoc analysis and just explain what these analyses are. Uh, well, really some of them. And this uh, the, the information I'm providing is primarily from uh, Andy Phil's wonderful book on s statistics uh, on SPSS. So the oh, as you see, we have two options here. We have post hoc analysis for equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed. Under equal variances assumed, we have 14 options. Under this one, not assumed, we have got only four options altogether. 18 options. So I'm going to tell you how to use these, some of them. LSD. LSD stands for the least significant difference. Uh, so LSD is pretty much like um, like t-tests, usual t-tests, in the, in, in the sense that, let me just draw this around this so you'll see what I'm talking about this one, um, in the sense that it does not make any attempts to control for the, t uh, the type 1 error. Uh, which means that there is a high chance that it will reject uh, another, uh, the otherwise uh, correct null hypothesis and we don't want that to happen. Therefore, it's not very highly recommended in my opinion. Uh, what I would uh, recommend would be, under different circumstances, would be Bonfroni's test and Taki's test. Here I just show these two. Bonfroni's test and Taki's test are, are basically good because both of them can control for the type 1 error error rate uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, of course, we should also remember that they are conservative tests, uh, which makes them uh, kind of low in statistical power. But if, if otherwise, uh, if you're concerned, more concerned about the the type 1 error, so these two will be uh, your best options. Another thing I would like to add here is that the Bonferrani's test has more power here. has more power uh, when the number of comparisons is small, but on the other hand, if the number of comparisons, pairwise comparisons, is large, uh, Taki is uh, recommended. So Taki, uh, Taki generally uh, has greater power um, in this context, and also it also have has a greater power than Chef. In some uh, textbooks in applied linguistics, I've seen that uh, authors recommend using Chef and Tamhain's T2 for um, equal variance is not assumed. Uh, like I said, uh, well, Taki seems to be more powerful, and my preference would be actually, um, you know, Taki. Then there are these two tests, which have been uh, developed by a group of authors. It's actually a hand, um, quite, quite, uh, quite a mouthful to remember. Uh, I think it stands for Ryan, Enot, Gabriel, and Welsh. Uh, and then F procedure and Ryan E not Gabriel and Welsh Q procedure. Well, this, th these are also good tests because they have good power and have a very good control over the type 1 error. Uh, but they are not recommended when sample sizes are different. 
so I'm gonna use this color the yellow actually the color code doesn't really mean anything um, so they're not recommended if the sample sizes uh, are different and as you remember or, or I don't know if I have <laughs> presented that I don't really remember but but if I if if not I will show you that the sample sizes in my uh, data are quite different from uh, each other therefore these are not recommend and finally we have got Hatchberg this one and Gabriel this one these two tests and these are the last two that I want to discuss here uh, they are also used when when the sample sizes are different maybe Gabriel has more uh, power than Hatchberg's G, GT2, uh, G2 test G2 GT2 well, that's quite a mouthful to say uh, there and the other thing is that the uh, the power to control for the type 1 error is probably not as high as that of Tucky so I remain to be a fan of the Tucky's test here the other th the other thing I, I would like to add is that unlike some of the textbooks which I mentioned which in, in applied linguistics recommend these two uh, well, Andy Field recommends games Howell under the circumstances where the equality of variances are not assumed or are uh, the equality of variances is not assumed or is violated. So I think that should be really enough. That's too much uh, information for this presentation. Feel free to stop the video and move back and forth uh, just uh, to see what I really mentioned there. If you're interested, you can look at uh, Andy Field's book. Uh, he provides a more in-depth analysis and exploration of uh, these uh, 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 these post-doc analysis. So I'm gonna just click on this here and click OK to continue to OK and like I said I've chosen these options I'm gonna choose OK to get descriptive statistics this just to show you how different my sample sizes are uh, normal technical uh, consists of one uh, 195 normal academic 486 and express is 1178 and that's that really indicates that my samples are significantly different from each other as I showed before uh, the Levine's test of <coughs> homogeneity of variances is not significant for grammar however we have a significant test for comprehension scores so the Levine's test has been uh, rejected or violated here okay so uh, this is still reliable this the test for grammar but some people might argue that since the uh, well, actually a lot of people would say so since the test of homogeneity of variances was violated as you see here for comprehension scores therefore uh, this is not very reliable okay that's fine so since it's not reliable in in many people's opinion uh, we should look at the robustest of equality of means as you can see they're telling us more or less the same story right here I just want to connect them in this way the p-values are significant the p-values are significant so nothing really changes uh, both tests simply indicate that there is s uh, a significant difference but we don't know what uh, what groups are significantly different from each other we already of course checked grammar scores and we, we saw that the three levels were significantly different and we want to figure out if the same pattern holds as you see this is the, uh, the grammar score and 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 uh, we have the same um, um, graph for comprehension scores I think the pattern is more or less the same almost the same uh, well I think I explained uh, sorry I explained the uh, postdoc analysis but I forgot to choose these so I'm going back to Tucky and to Games Howell I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna click OK here I'm gonna get so you can see almost everything else that I have created that I, I had generated above except this 
table, which is going to be really huge. So for grammar score, uh, we have already looked at it, all comparisons. So I'm going to just focus on uh, comprehension scores or Tucky. But Tucky in this uh, analysis is not applicable because, as you saw, uh, the uh, assumption of the equality of variances did not did not meet. So we're going to focus on Games Howell. Right. So let me just here uh, draw some lines around the p-values. Every p-value that you see in this box is significant. Therefore. We just, you know, we really uh, uh, compare them uh, and make sense of them like a, us a, nor a usual t-test. So there is a significant difference between normal technical, normal academic, and in the same way, the significant difference. So this is this this is the first comparison. I, I color code them again. This is the second comparison, and then express. And normal academic have not been compared, so this is going to be the third comparison. Uh, I should have used a different color, but it doesn't matter. I think you get what I mean. So pair one, pair two, pair three. That's you know the rest of the information here is basically redundant and duplicate. I think I hope that the SPSS designers will really do away with this in the future because they don't add anything to our uh, knowledge about our analysis. So this uh, brings me to the end of this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, partial eta square or effect size and how to estimate it for ANOVA tests because it's a very important requirement in running ANOVA tests, uh, specifically when your ANOVA test is significant. Well, if it's not significant, then as you saw here, it's significant for both variables. If it's not significant, then uh, estimating uh, partial eta square or uh, the effect size doesn't make any sense. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.